Hello once again. I am Pastor Berlinda A. Love, and I want to personally thank you for taking the time to tune in and watch the various wonderful ministries that are aired on Preach the Word Worldwide Network. My program is entitled The Power of Love Global Ministry, and it is aired each Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, and you may also view it on the network live on demand channel. I want to again say thank you. God bless you. Continue to watch the network and be blessed through the word of God. And remember that love conquers all. My wonderful friends around the world. I am Pastor Berlinda A. Love, and I would like to welcome you to the Power of Love Global Ministry. I say welcome, welcome, welcome. It is indeed my joy, privilege, and my honor to be able to speak to you again today. We know that every day that the Lord gives us is a blessing, and I am so delighted that all of you are here to enjoy this program and are willing to make me happy by your presence and thereby pleasing God. Thank you so much for calling in today. The topic that I would like to speak to you on today is what exactly are children? What exactly are children? We know that in the process of life, we go through stages. And when we were children, we used to hear this little uh, song or psalm or whatever it was. And it went like this. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes whoever with the baby carriage. Little things like that were said all the time around children when I was young and growing up. And I've held on to those uh, wonderful little sayings over the years. I yes. um, have never forgotten them. And so on my heart today, it was laid to speak to you about children. What exactly are these little things that we carry in our wombs for nine months, bring into the world, and have to raise and care for for a number of years? God only knows how many. But while we're going through that with children, and everybody listening in today has had some kind of uh, relationship with children either at home, on your job. They did not have to be children that you brought into the world. They could have been children in your family, children that you taught, children at your church. But all of us have been children and we have been exposed to many, many children over the years, amen? So I'd like to start out with Psalm 127.3. It says, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Now, that says a lot. Um, it says what we need to hear about children because they are truly a gift from God. Even though they may be misbehaving at times or causing you um, undue stress. They're children and they're going through stages and we all went through those stages and we know all about causing stress and headaches on mom and dad. But the Bible is telling us that these little children that can be causing us all of these problems are truly a gift from God and a reward from him. Let me give you an example. As we get older, 
our bodies tend to get more feeble and weak until we reach the point where we can no longer care for ourselves. And then something happens in the family called role reversal. And our children become our caregivers. And that is one reason why it is so important that we demonstrate and show them love as they're growing up so that when we need them, they will in turn show us love. And that will be our reward. That will be what God intended for it to be when he gave the children to us. Amen. And there are some other scriptures that um, I'd like to share with you as well. This one says from Isaiah 54 verse 13, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. So as children are growing up, we want them to have a peaceful life, a good life, a life away from trouble. So many times young people are involved in the wrong things, particularly when they get away from home and under the direct supervision of their parents and loved ones. They can be easily influenced by their peers, especially in school because everybody wants to have friends. So it is so crucially important that we have Bible studies with them at home, that we talk the right talk around them, that we walk the right walk. We demonstrate to them the godly life that we want them to exhibit when they are not around us, amen? That is when it's so important. It's important for them to be able to stand up against the wiles of the devil when they're out on their own and you can't be there to pull them up when they fall. Amen. That takes a strong constitution and it takes a lot of hard work from parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, uh, the village to get a child in the proper frame of mind so that one day they'll be able to be independent, wise, and smart. And I especially put wise before smart because the Bible also tells us that wisdom is better than knowledge. You can always get knowledge, but wisdom is something that you have to have all day and all night long. It's something that you may need spontaneously and you don't have to go anywhere to study or read about it. It's something that's already ingrained in your soul from the way you were brought up and trained, amen? So it goes on to say that great shall be the peace of your children. So when children are taught by the Lord, and sometimes they will stray. They're human, just like everybody else. They're prone to make mistakes and fail. However, they will come back one day if they are trained up in the way that they shall go. The Bible tells us they will not depart from it when they get older. Amen? Something always makes them come back to their original training. And so that's really, really important that we give it to them while they're young, because this is when their minds are more acceptable to learning and understanding. The formative years, the elementary years, the youngest years are when their minds are shaped and formed. And so we have to be prepared to uh, do that work early so that later on we can have peace and this is saying great shall be the peace of the children as well because they won't stumble as much. They won't make as many mistakes uh, because we know that some mistakes are easily corrected and others are not. 
So we try to protect them and shelter them from all hurt, harm, and danger. And everyone knows that you cannot be with your child around the clock, 24 hours a day. So when they go out into the environment, um, they're prone to meet up with all kinds of situations. But when they're taught by the Lord, they can handle them a lot better. Amen? So let's see uh, the next scripture that I want to share with you about children. And I already said that, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from that. And I already explained that, but let me just emphasize again. Um, sometimes we think that children have gone astray. They're lost like the prodigal son, but we have to understand the prodigal son realized that he was lost and he made a decision to go back home just in the nick of time so that he would not have to live with the swines and eat from the pigs of food and be broke with no money and no friends. We know that sometimes when you don't have any money, you don't have many friends. So um, after doing all that partying with friends and losing everything, he realized that his best place was back at home, amen? And when he went back, he was welcomed with loving arms by his father. So we have to understand that children are not infallible. They are learning as they grow. Um, they experiment a lot, which causes them to sometimes get in trouble by doing things around the house that could be dangerous or trying to take things apart and fix it and uh, doing things like that. They have an interest in a lot of things that they really don't understand. And so the hence the reason for parents to um, govern them and to protect them and keep them safe until such time as they know how to protect themselves. And that's a hard job. It takes a long time to uh, finally say that you were successful in raising your children. They go through stages and high school graduation is when you start to really say the child is now going to be going to college or wherever, work study program or some other kind of skill or whatever, and uh, they'll probably be leaving home in just a few years. So we have to think about time. How much time? What exactly are children? What are they made of? What is their constitution? How do they work? How do they think? Um, we know that children are very honest people. They say what's on their mind. It just comes out like they feel it should. And uh, we could take example from them because they are truly most times very honest people in what they say um, spontaneously. So they're wonderful people. If you watch them, they don't have any cares. They don't let things bother them too much unless they're feeling ill um, or have some childhood disease or something like that. But most of the time, they're just happy playing outside, riding their bikes, roller skating, um, watching their favorite movies on TV, getting on the computers and, and cell phones and other, I call them toys. Um, and even if they're for adults, they're really adult toys, amen? So as long as they're occupied, they really aren't much of a problem. It's when they're bored and when they don't really have anything constructive to do that they begin to act out. And this is true in school as well. All the more reason why parents have to make sure that they have things to keep them busy, both in the home and when they're out of school. 
okay? And their lives will be more enriched if they are doing extracurricular activities, amen? And now we're in a stage where we have to be very careful where we allow children to go. But I do believe that things will get better and eventually we'll be back to where we were. So now that means we have to prepare more for them to do at home because they can't get out as readily as they did before. So then Matthew 19, 14 says, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. So what that is saying is that don't keep the children from coming to the Lord. Don't hinder them. Um, be with them, work with them, labor with them, help them, teach them, guide them, because the kingdom of heaven belongs to these little innocent children that have children's minds, although sometimes we think they're being a little bit too big for their britches, they used to say. Basically, children think with a child's mind unless they are extremely gifted and uh, thinking way above their age as a lot of children are today. So what does it mean heaven belongs to such as these? To me, that's saying that we have to be more like children sometimes. We must have that humble spirit um, like a child would have, especially when we are approaching the Almighty. You know, we should come before God in a humble spirit, not haughty, not demanding, not, um, you know, being so above ourselves, but in a humble way, approach the throne of grace so that we understand that God is truly above us. He's our creator. He's our father. He's given us everything that we need. So we must be as children before him because we are his heavenly children. Amen. These are so wonderful, these verses in the Bible that I'm sharing with you. Um, and now this one I really love. It says, Proverbs 17, verse 6. Children's children are a crown to the aged, and parents are the pride of their children. And I was speaking to you earlier about the role reversal. Your children will be your crown when you get old. And much of that depends on how you raise them now, how you treat them, how you talk to them. Everybody deserves respect. Even if you have to discipline a child, you discipline them with love. And they must understand why they're receiving that discipline before it is done so that you know they know that you know they deserve whatever it is and you know that's the price they have to pay for being uh quote unquote unruly so it says they're a crown to the agent and parents are the pride of their children so when you live that godly life before your children, they will always love you no matter how old you get. They will respect you even when you're gone. They will continue to do the things that you taught them to do. They will eat the same foods that you prepared for them. They will like that better than other things. They will... Um, Watch the same TV programs that you allowed them to watch and that you watched with them. They will go a lot of the same places that you went. And they will just be carbon copies of you when you're gone. And you will be their pride and they will be your pride because you've done all that excellent work. 
Now, does that mean that every child will turn out to be perfect? Not at all. It does not mean that. I'm not saying that because I feel after dealing with children for 31 years in a public school system that every child is unique. Every child has its own uh, mindset and their own talents, their own abilities. And we really can't change that. But what we can do is try and work with them and develop their positive attributes, reward the positive things that they do. And then one day they will continue to make you proud and uh, be successful people, God willing. Amen. So children's children, your children are going to be the crown of you one day. Amen. Three John, third John chapter one, verse four says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Amen. What a joy it is to parents to see that their children are successful, they're out, they're working, they're living independently, um, they're able to manage themselves and their children and their homes and they're living good godly lives as much as humanly feasible. That gives any parent joy because you know that one day you will not be with them, all things being equal, parents will go before the children. So we know that one thing parents want, my parents wanted it, everybody's parents want their children to be able to stand on their own two feet when they're no longer here to help them out. Amen? So. We have no greater joy than to hear that our children are walking in the truth. Amen. Third John 1 4. Amen. It is such a wonderful thing when we understand that children are truly a gift from God. That's the only thing that we can say about it. They're wonderful people and they're loving people, and you really hate to see them grow up, but they grow up so fast. Time does not wait on anybody. You look around, and they're not babies anymore. Then they're in elementary school, and then they're in junior high school, then they're in high school, then college, and you wonder where the time went. You remember when those children were running around the house, um, and there was so much fun and all of a sudden they're not little anymore so it's it's just wonderful i have a pair of baby shoes that are hanging um on the mirror in my car and they've been there for years and years and years and they're shoes that i bought from for one of my nephews when he was just a little baby and i still have them and he's about ready to graduate from high school now so I thought about sending them to him so he could see how very little his feet were at that time. And they're so cute, but they've been hanging on my cars all those years. So Deuteronomy 5 verse 29 says, Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always so that it might go well with them and their children forever. Amen. That's a good one because what that's saying is that when you raise them up so that they learn to fear um, God and to fear other things in life, that means that things will go well for them. Uh, it's not bad to fear things. In fact, you could live a longer and more prosperous life because you have fear of certain things. And so their hearts, when they're inclined to fear uh, God and the ways of God, they will live better and they will be better. 
and you will have to worry about them a lot less. It says that everything will go well with them and with their children, your grandchildren, amen? So it's a generational thing that we're looking at when we talk about what exactly are these children, these little creatures that we bring into the world and that we care for for so many years. And there are other um, scriptures that speak to parents also, such as Ephesians 6, 4, that says, Fathers, do not pro provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. So um, what that is saying is that, you know, when we discipline with love and not anger, um, children are more acceptable to what we are trying to show them and teach them. Um, and we're teaching it from the Bible. We know that God is love and that God said, because he loves us, we should love everybody else. And that includes our children, especially our children, because you want your children to love you. You don't want them to uh, be fearful of you 24 hours a day. That's a tough life on a child to be afraid to go home from school or to be afraid that they're going to be punished every day for little itty bitty things. Um, and it happens and it has always happened, but God wants us to show love and mercy to children, just like we as adults want him to show his compassionate love towards us. Now, Matthew 18 verses one through three says at that time the disciples came to jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and calling to him a child he put him in the midst of them and said truly i say to you unless you turn and become like children you will never enter the kingdom of heaven Amen. So children are these little innocent creatures, really. Um, they are a joy to be around. They're learning, experimenting all through life until they get to a point where their minds are more formed to be adult-like thinkers. And it is awesome to have the opportunity to work with them. You can learn a lot from them and from their spirits. But we must remember that they have feelings just like we do. They experience the same sentiments that we do. Love, um, hate, um, anger, uh, jealousy, all of those things they can harbor in their hearts. And if you demonstrate to them a better way, then they will learn to be more loving, more kind, more compassionate. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And remember this lesson today. What exactly are children? What are those creatures? And I will be looking forward to you next week. Same time, same station. I am Pastor Belinda A. Love. This is the Power of Love Global Ministry. And also remember that love conquers all. God bless you.